All right, so here we're looking at mitral valve regurgitations. Okay, we're going to look at what views are best to assess it. Okay, and the ones we can use at the bedside uh, to take a look if it's present. And what are the features of it? What should we actually be looking for? So let's look at the views, okay? So the best views, if you recall from looking at mitral stenosis, was that parasternal long axis view where we could assess for any calcification, any thickening of that mitral valve, or any doming of that anterior leaflet. Now here, in the when we're assessing mitral regurgitation, the apical four chamber view tends to be a great one to look at for its presence. So if you look here, we can see the apical uh, chamber view, okay, the four chamber view, and that's this one right here, where you can see the four chambers as the name implies, okay, so here's the left atrium, the left ventricle, this would be the right atrium, and the right ventricle, okay, I've only marked the left side because that's our focus here, okay, because it is the mitral valve that is the one that sits here, okay, between the left atrium and the left ventricle. And that's what we're looking to assess uh, for mitral regurgitation. So now that you know that, what, if you look to the right of that, you can see that we're now using something called color Doppler. Okay, this color flow Doppler, we get into this more in our course separately and go through, you know, what we, how we use it and why we use it and when we use it. But here we'll show that it can be used in mitral valve regurgitation. So looking for any mitral insufficiency. And what you want to notice is the color that is now demonstrated. So notice that we are seeing this color, these, what we call a jet, and then there's also this panel here on the side. Remember, our transducer sits at the top here, okay, from the highest. So this top of the view is the closest to the transducer. This one right here is our marker that helps us know the position side we're on. But notice that now we have this color flow that's now going between the left atrium and the left ventricle okay so you may wonder what does this color mean okay and that's why we have this over here on the side now one way that you can remember what these colors mean is by uh, simply the mnemonic BART okay and BART means blue for away and red for towards Okay, and what does that mean? Well, if you can see here's the blue, okay, and the red more on the yellow side, so blue would be away, okay, and red is towards. So now let's erase this and see what we mean here. So remember we have our transducer, imagine it at the top here, and if the jet is moving away, it'll appear blue. So notice that this jet right here appears blue, okay? And that's because it's moving away in this direction from the transducer. If it were red, okay, it would be heading towards uh, this direction, towards the transducer and appear the red color. So because we have a blue color that's occurring during systole, okay, so as the left ventricle is contracting uh, and it's coming back into the left atrium, that's what we expect to see with mitral insufficiency or mitral regurgitation. Most of that color jet in the left atrium, which is this portion here, remember, okay, is blue during systole, okay? So that's what we see in mitral regurgitation. So hopefully that makes sense. The systolic flow is directed from the left ventricle back to the left atrium. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Now there's a few other views you can assess for it. I think this is the ideal one in the apical four chamber view, so make sure you, you know that one. The parasternal long axis view, again, here's the left ventricle and the left atrium here. You can assess uh, for any regurgitation uh, between that valve there. Okay, so that's that parasternal long axis view. The parasternal short axis view, again, here's your left ventricle. And then remember that this kind of fish mouth is that mitral valve. So this portion here is that mitral valve. You can assess for it, okay. And then in the subcostal four chamber view, you have your left atrium, your left ventricle, and then you have your mitral valve between there. You can also assess for it. But you can obviously see that the best view here 
uh, or at least most ideal, and the one that you tend to get the best view in is this apical four chamber view. All right, so let's review what we discussed before we end. So the views to assess apical four chamber is ideal, okay? You can also look for, at the peristral long axis, short axis, especially at that mitral valve level in the subcostal four chamber. The features you're looking for are you're turning on that color flow Doppler, you're looking for systolic flow directed from the left ventricle to the left atrium, okay? So during systole, instead of it going out of the aorta, which some uh, will, but others, uh, so, uh, other flow will come back into the left atrium. And what you'll see is that blue color color jet, as we saw here, uh, coming back into that left atrium. So notice it now, if I erase this, you can see that blue jet heading right back into the left atrium from that left ventricle. Okay, so that mostly color blue jet uh, there. Okay, and you can see a little bit of this turbulence that's occurring at that valve as well. So hopefully that rem that makes sense. Now remember that mnemonic, that BART mnemonic, meaning if it's appears blue, that means it's moving away from the transducer. And if it's red, it's moving towards the transducer. And in this case, we're seeing that blue jet insistently that is consistent with mitral regurgitation. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md. Okay, so this is our website. And what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute. And this is the course here, over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100 more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter, okay? So completely separate from what you're getting online for free, okay? These are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book, okay? And then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide. Uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there, okay? We'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already, okay? So this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use, uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course, okay? Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on, okay? And then you also get our pocket EKG reference, okay? This was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay. A lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay? You can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay? And you find yourself using other resources, which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So 
Again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.